Okay, hello everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Holotube. We're very happy to have uh, Nick Povutikul today from Durham University, uh, who will be talking about um, global symmetries and G2 group and holography. I don't remember the title exactly, sorry. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it's going to be very interesting. So as usual, just please everybody ask questions uh, whenever you want, just unmute yourselves and I will only intervene if, if, if time is of the essence. So please, Nick, go ahead. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me here. And yeah, uh, well, it's a great pleasure to talk in Holotube. So I will be talking about um, what is this stuff, which the, the, the meaning of them will become, hopefully will become clear to you in a bit. Uh, so this is a work I did together with Nabil Iqbal from Berem, uh, who is uh, in the audience. So please feel free to ask him difficult questions. But that's, that was a joke. Uh, so please feel free to ask me any questions. There is no stupid question, only a stupid answer and stupid joke. Okay, so before we, before we get to the meat of this, uh, let, let me get the motive, say the over, or kind of like overarching motivation for the whole talk. So, so for those of us who study, well, on a few theories, like one quantity that we, we would like to have, we could, is the partition function, which essentially contains pretty much all the information in your theory. Um, but for strong interaction, this is quite difficult to compute for most of the time. So uh, there, there are simple cases, like when you have the strong weak duality that there, you can express it in a simple form, like in the holographic duel, which I, I doubt I have to explain to this audience here. But if I have to, then uh, please let me know. I will just skip it for now. Uh, the other way, which is uh, kind of go hand in hand with this thing is to, is to, to uh, look at the IR, IR sector of the theories and then you build an effective field theory of that, which is, I mean, that this is a fancy way of saying that you guess what is the partition function using the global symmetry of your system. And today I will talk about one of such EFT, which is hydrodynamics. So, um, now, what do I mean by hydrodynamic? when I say hydrodynamics or hydrodynamic limits? So uh, let's imagine that you put a theory on the on a circle, or I mean, sorry, on the finite temperature, not the circle, on the cylinder and on the finite, equivalently by the, the finite temperature. And then you, you start shaking it and then you, you look at how the operators evolve. And if there is a big window where you have a, all the operator decays much faster than the, concept, than the, the, the one that is a conserved current, then in, this is the window that there's these, these time scale are the one where hydrodynamic behaviors will kick in. We also assume that there is no branch cut at small omega and k at, at this like at these time scale of your interest, so that you can assume that the these quantity can be created and expand. And the solution will be always be exponential in time, like this, not, not the power law. Okay, so so what does what does this mean? So if the, this limit can actually be achieved then it means that if you have different theories, but with the same global symmetry, then they, they can describe by the same equations, essentially because you know the microscopic stuff described by all these like other operators will, has already decayed away. And this is kind of what well, intimately linked to the bosonic sector of the theory that described by uh, bosonic sector of holographic theory, sorry, that described by like S. Hubert action plus bunches of gauge field that corresponded to, to, to the global symmetry of the boundary theory. And just to make sure that we are on the same page, uh, let me do some notation. So this is what the hydrodynamic looks like in, in you know, what I used to. So you write down a partition function, let's say it's a functional metric and some, some gauge field A, say u1 and if it's the invariant under the diffeomorphism and the, the, the gauge transformation you have a conservation of number and conservation of t mu nu. so hydrodynamic is essentially amount to expressing these conserved quantities in terms of some proxy which is the conjugate of the conserved current like t is the conjugate of a one over t is a conjugate of energy uh, u is conjugate of momentum and mu is a conjugate of the density and then the background field then you do the gradient expansion. 
So there will be, you write and write down every term you can, you can possibly do at each order in derivative. For example, the zero derivative, these are all the terms that you can write. These are all the rank two symmetric tensors. And this is a vector and then you go order by order in gradient expansion. So the only input here is, well, essentially global symmetry and you have a macroscopic constraint and then you assume that the gradient expansion uh, actually exists so that you can go from one derivative to, to higher order. And you know, this is a, well, as we all know, this is a pretty simple equation and surprisingly reliable in strongly interacting system. However, uh, in, in QFT, we, fortunately, we have a lot more interesting symmetry structure. So you can have the ordinary symmetry, you know, where you have a back, the position function is a function of background gauge field invariant under this kind of transformation. You can have something called the anomaly. This is what happened when, when you do this, this gauge transformation in the background field, you not quite get the same partition function, but it's off by some phase. It could be U1 or Cn. Uh, and you can also have a, a one-form symmetry. This is in the case where you, if your theory has a, a line operators, like use a line, 12 line, or like other defect, the one, one dimension defect operators. Now you can have some stuff like the brains or surface operators, or that those domain walls or those kind of stuff. And what you have to do here is to partition function will be, it will depend on like these higher form gauge view, which basically contain the high index. So these, uh, this background field will couple to the current, like the other ordinary one will couple to the, the vector current, which we saw earlier. And the integration of this thing will count the number of like point particle that you have in your system. Uh, for this one, for the one form symmetry, you have the two form gauge field. It's coupled to the two form current when you integrate over the two the co dimension two surface, or the, sorry, co dimension one surface, sorry, co dimension two surface of the theory. Then, then you get the, the number of kind of like flux that pass through the system. Okay, um, but this is not apparently not, not, not everything in the story. You can have a more interesting stuff. Like uh, you can have a product of the ordinary and the higher form symmetry, or you can, you can use one to extend another, making like anomaly of, of these two. And you can also have like a even crazier stuff that is not obeying a group axioms. So for example, for those of you who know about the fusion categories in, in topological field theory or six J symbols and those kind of stuff. So, so there, there are a plethora of symmetries that, that are richer than, in, than just translation and the concept chart. In, the, in your system. So, and that, that brings me to the dream of the, when, where we, when we start this project. Uh, so, you know, there's, there is ordinary symmetry, higher form symmetry, and then there is something, something called higher group global symmetry exists, which is like, it's something that kind of like in the, in the borderline of these type of symmetries. So, you know, it exists in quantum theory and we can do it for ordinary, we can do hydrodynamic for ordinary symmetry. So can, how can we not do it for this uh, higher group structure? It's a it's more intricate symmetry structure, but you know, it exists. So can you build a hydrodynamic version of that? And is it have a like observable and universal prediction in the same way as the usual hydrodynamic does? Nick. And Nick, yes. Can I just ask since one can. Yes, George, uh, is that um, Giorgio? Yes. Um, it, the, there are theorems that at least in sort of microscopic quantum field theory, these high forms can only be an effective theory. They cannot be fundamental, like, you know, the Weinberg-Witten theorem and things like that. I mean, already it's been one, you need a conserved charge, it's been two, it only couples to, um, to gravity. Uh, it can only be something like gravity at higher order, it can only be composite particles. So why mm -hmm. should this dream be true? Uh, okay. If, if, higher form, if most higher form symmetries are effective theories, hydro is an effective theory. So you're building an effective theory of an effective theory. You see what I mean? I, I see what you mean, yeah. So, okay. So let, let me get to, okay. The, the, let me make one distinction first. So I think you mentioned the, like the, something along the line of the, like common mandula theorem, like the, the higher spin object. So I'm not talking about higher spin. This is like about higher form. So this is essentially, it, it just like the symmetry that does the job of counting the line operators. Now, now you can say, okay, well, are these symmetry like a fundamental symmetry or are they emergent? So we can, we can say, is QED uh, a fundamental theory? 
like quantum electrodynamics. So this, the key, well, we know the QVD is not QVD complete, right? You, you have a, well, you have a Landau pole in the UV. And, you know, in the IR, you have a conserv conservation of magnetic flux. So what I'm using here, what I will be using in a bit is the conservation of magnetic flux, which it is true that this is a, you know, it's not the, it, it will be going away somewhere because QVD break down at, at the Landau pole scale. But uh, it's, I guess it, to answer your question, this is like, it's the different regime of effective theory. So the, the symmetry may emerge in the scale like before the hydrodynamic kick in. So that, that would be the case in QED, uh, in, in quantum electrodynamic, for example. Does that answer your question properly? Yeah, thanks, thanks. Okay, thank you. Any, any other questions, by the way, about Okay, then I, I will just go ahead. Um, yeah, okay, so, so what is the holographic duo has to do with these things? So uh, at least for us, like this is like a guide and a testing ground to that we, you know, whatever this hydrodynamic theory that we cook up is actually correct. And we can try to derive one from another. Also, um, for there, there are some people who are interested in, you know, like a 6D SCFT or a 5D theory that has a, this higher group symmetry. So maybe this could be a template for them, but I don't think there are any of those in this audience. Okay, so now that was a dream and here is the plan. So the plan is, okay, I will tell you what is a, you know, a simple example of QOT with the one form U1 symmetry and how you make a two group global symmetry that builds out of the zero form U1 and the one form U1. By zero form, I mean like the ordinary symmetry and the one form is just the one that corresponds to the line, uh, to the line operators. And then I will tell you how do we build, the, you know, it's like sort of a cartoon version of how we build the hydrodynamic for the two group global symmetry. And then a minimalist version of a holographic model that corresponds to these hydrodynamics. All right. So uh, there is an example that we, we just talked about, like a, a four dimension theory with the one form U1 in QVD4. So we, when we look at the Maxwell theory, we can ask what is the global symmetry of the Maxwell? And well, okay, there's no gauge symmetry. And let's say forget about translation and, and rotation. So what the symmetry of the system is actually the conserved electric flux and the conserved magnetic flux. And this is uh, I denote by U1E and U1M. So it basically just saying that there's magnetic flux, which is, which is conserved, which is, you know, without, without QVD, or without doing quantum, this would be something that you would have guessed. Um, and this associated to the Wilson line and the line. So, and now let's say you couple this thing to like a trivial, some, some simple charge matter that basically does the, the screen electric field away. So electric, electric flux line cannot be in an electric charge and it's no longer conserved. So what you have left, uh, the right-hand side of this equation is no longer zero and you throw it away from the effective description. It's no longer conserved. Uh, and, but you, if you don't have a monopole, like in this universe, then, then you can have a, a conserved magnetic flux, uh, which is still a good description, a good symmetry to describe your Hilbert space in the IR or you know, your field your, your here. So the partition function that is suitable to this DFT is this, is a function, partition function depends on, okay, perhaps background metric and also the two form gauge field, which is invariant under B equals to D lambda, B plus D lambda, where this lambda is the one form gauge field transformation parameter. And you couple them to the background stress energy tensor and the background, sorry, you, you couple this source to the current in, in this manner. Okay, so you may want to think about this in terms of gauging. Let's say you have a U1 symmetry and you want to couple them to some Maxwell theory and then, you know, kind of like taking these two systems separately. Like you, you have a U1, usual, usual U1 fluid that, you know, we, we talk about kind of like here and then just, just gauging that. Now that there is a, um, I, I, that there's nothing wrong with that, you can do it perfectly fine. Uh, but I would say that it's not quite efficient way to do it. So first of all, um, when we look at the Maxwell equation by doing that, then the Maxwell equation, it's, it's kind of break the gradient expansion, right? You, you, you have like B star F, which is a second order in derivative and equal, it's supposed to be equal proportional to the 
the ju1 uh, that come in from this partition function and this is a zero order and derivative so you have to you know do some acrobatic of rearranging the Gernon expansion which, which you can which you can do um, but um, it, it seems quite it, it is quite painful to do that systematically and it has only been done quite recently by Pablo Kofton and Juan Hernandez recently so also if you were to do it classically like no no quantum no averaging then throw away this integral then what what you're seeing here is that you factorize like the fluid sector and the macro sector together so um this is justified let's say if you have a pressure that is like depending on only purely from the fluid parameter and the one that depends on on the magnetic flux density but if you don't have those then it's a bit weird to you know to, to do it this way um also relying on the gauge symmetry is it's a bit on the symmetry that is got that got gauge away already it's a, it's a bit weird it's not the real symmetry of the system and you know or put it more precisely you you don't your hubert space doesn't know about gauge symmetry so why would you use that to build an effective description also like uh, just another remark that you know we wouldn't do this the same game if you you know to build like sun color fluid and then you couple it to a blue one and then gauging it away again like maybe this would be like quite useless thing to do um and and we know we know that we don't have to do that because well for, for sun like like let's say sun young mu theory we know that there is a cn one form global symmetry which is a discrete symmetry there's no other global symmetry except you know uh translation and rotate translation and rotation which is why we can just write down uh, the concept team you knew and nothing else uh, and this is like uh, you know the one that polycastro son and starnet did like 20 years ago okay so now now we we go to the interesting example of two group in qvd and now this is just it, it's kind of like the same qvd but you, the, the matter sector is a bit more complicated so let's imagine the ma the matter sector that you know before you gauging. I, I just advocating against gauging, but you know let let's for, to orient ourselves. Let's just try get, do, to do the get, the gauging picture anyway. So you have a system, uh, two U with two U one, with two conserved current J and this the, the couple to the two background view A A one and A two, and and there is a mixed anomaly between them. So mixed anomaly meaning that the right hand side one of them is a uh, is a function of the the field strength of of Two of, uh, of the two U1. And you can add the counter term and move them around. Okay, so this is a this is a system. This is this is, looks anomalous. So if you have this mixed anomaly, uh, then you can gauge one of the U1 away. And by doing that, well, okay, this this condition will be gauge, will be will be zero off shell and will be gone. Uh, this you have a conserved magnetic flux, and then this the right hand side of this equation, the second line will become the following. So it will become a function of an operator and a source and a mix between the source. So um, I would say that I would claim that this theory is no longer anomalous. And, and the reason why is that, well, the right hand side is not a function of your source anymore. So this is like one clear description you can create. And similarly, you can say that, well, that there's, uh, you, you can make this theory gap by, by saying, Oh, okay. Maybe maybe that argument should come later. But okay, just the, the simplest one is that well, if for it to be anomaly, right inside has to be a source, and now it's not. Uh, so now we can we can try asking. Uh, okay, if we have like these two these two current, how can we get this y identity from the generating function? And the way you can do that is saying that okay, you write a position function in this way. And you demand that it is invariant under the following transformations. So you you shift a by d lambda, where lambda is a scalar. You shift b by d lambda, b big lambda, which is a one form. And but you also add another piece, which is the uh, some integer kappa multiplied by this parameter lambda, and then the flux. So this is what one. This is. Uh, you know, it's also extremely oversimplified. And I think anyone who worked on two group before uh, will probably get angry with me for saying this, but you know, I can, you, you can take this as a, you know, something that is called two group. It's the one where partition, global symmetry, it's the one where you have this partition function and you transform it this way. I see Blaze open the camera. 
Yeah, hi Nick. I, I didn't quite catch what's your definition for capital J in terms of J1 and J2. You have J1 oh, and J2 capital. and now you have capital J. Ah, okay, sorry. Then the capital J is just, uh, in this case, it's just the star of, capital J is a star DA. It's the, it's the magnetic flux of the, the, the one that, that you want that, that gauge out. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Okay. So, uh, where, where were we? Okay. So I just I should I should mention that the, I, this is like not the only symmetry system that has a global symmetry. Like this is the one that you got from gauging, but you should think of this thing as like a genuine global symmetry. This is as good as the other global symmetry that we can have. So we want to take this and, and there are many other systems where you can actually get it without, without gauging, like in you know some QCD, QED-ish type model, in CTN type model, uh, in 6D theory, and also in topological field theory, that you have bundles of these guys. So another, another way that you, can, you, you might want to visualize and why that, that, that there is no anomaly is the following example. So this is the, the, the system that also has a, uh, like a two group is the one we have before, but maybe more, with, with more pictures and the equation is that the ensemble of the Abikosov vortex with the fermion serum mode living inside. So, uh, so we, let's, let's imagine that we have this, the previous system. We, you know, we Higgs the, the gauge field and you lock the magnetic field in a lot as a, in, on the Abikosov vortex. Um, and on the on the water itself, you can look at this equation, this relation is like a, and compactify on a T two, for example, and it looks like it is anomalous, and that there is a you can follow computation in Jackie and Rabi computations like 30, 40 years ago, and you see that there is a zero mode living inside this water. Um, but the whole system itself is not anomalous, right? You, because well, I can, if the if it is really really an anomaly, I cannot remove the zero mode. Um, but I can, in this case, I can just turn off the magic field and it will be gone. Uh, and there is, and another reason why this is not an anomaly, uh, anomalous system after you gauging is that like there, there, there's, there can be a bulb that, you know, make an inflow to the, uh, to the, to the string and the, the whole system, the whole anomaly of the whole system is canceled out and the, uh, the system is anomaly free. But this picture is quite intuitive in, in several ways that, you know, we, we know that there is a zero mode inside this vertex where you turn on density. So, and it should have, effect, it could have effect and it, you will see that it will affect uh, the macroscopic transport of the system. Um, I can try to say a few more words about the two groups. Uh, that is still extremely oversimplified, but, you know, with, 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 more, with more details. So let's look at the partition function where we, with this following transformation. Now, you, what you will notice is that if I want to define a field strength for A, I can do it in a normal way. But if I want to define a field strength for this B field, like you know the, the, the one that's kind of like the, the, uh, the, the covariant derivative, sorry, exterior derivative of B, then I, I would kind of fail because, like, because this annoying extra piece. So, this means that the physical flux that you can do, that you can define is uh, this H, field strength H, which is the B, and you minus the subtracted by the schoen simon terms, or the schoen simon tree forms. The, this coefficient K here has to be integer because if I want this flux to be quantized, uh, you know, I can, I can integrate this over the tree surface and for this whole thing to be well defined because schoen simon integrate on the tree surface have this integer. And, you know, that this piece has to be integer too. Okay, I, I would go, I would gloss over this cohomology stuff, but um, for other things, uh, if you if you like to receive more details, uh, these two papers are pretty nice. And the Cordova talk in spring last year. And also like there's a review of, you know, how, to, how do you see this thing by relaxing the group axioms uh, and, and from, from a more mathematical perspective, which is surprisingly readable. In, in this paper by Bayes and Water in 2010. Um, so I, I will skip this as well. Uh, if you want 
to see like how how do you see that how do you get the two group from make the associativity by relaxing the associativity then I, I can come back to this in the, at the end but it's not so important right now okay so now you know we kind of sort of know what is a two group let's so let's try building hydrodynamic so uh for for the ideal level then it is perfectly it is okay to look at to look at hydrodynamic as an analytic continuations of a theory uh, that you define on the cylinder with a, with a side S1. So you, you can try to write down the partition function, which is a function of a, uh, like a parameters in this theory. So for the theory with the global U1 symmetry, you have a background U1 gauge field. And so you say that, okay, partition my partition function can only depend on not so many parameters. Uh, it can depend on the size of the thermal cycle, and it can depend on the you know the Wilson loop that's wrapped around this thermal cycle, and this this would be it. So you do that uh, in in these following ways, uh, and you put it in the curved space, and so that things couple to the background field properly, and you vary it, and you will find that the current is is the following form, which is the most general form that you can write, but by putting it in this form, it automatically give you like the, the first law of the dynamic and the extensitivity condition. You can get the same constraint from like cooking up some entropy current and demand that uh, it, it doesn't produce, that its divergence is zero, which is what you expected from, uh, you know, from ideal fluid that is undissipated. Now you can try to kind of get the same information from holography as well. Uh, for example, let, let's take the, the bulk to be the, the usual Maxwell field. And let me write it in terms of like the, the boundary components and the, the, the radio component. Now, what I can do is I say, okay, well, the, 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 the boundary component at infinity would be just the boundary gauge field. And I also have the, the additional operators, which is the Wilson line connecting from the boundary to the horizon or some horizon to some radius R. Now I can choose the radio gauge and uh, move these objects to, co to combine with the background field in the bulk, with, with the, the gauge view in the bulk and, com and combine into this object. So um, why, why am I doing this kind of thing? So we know that the partition function of the system, it, it, it has to be gauge invariant, like the gauge invariant in the bulk. So, and usually we just say that it is okay, it, the, that this theory depends on the chemical potential, which is just a T component of the gauge field. So I, I used to wonder like why in the universe it depends on the gauge field alone. Like what, what about gauge invariance and all that? So, and this is, mm -hmm. this, this is actually why. So you can see that uh, by choosing the radio gauge, you combine things in this way. And I, you can demand the regularity conditions of the, the time component at the horizon to be zero. And you left with the following residual gauge transformation, shifting uh, this phi operator. And the only operator that is invariant at zero derivative in this setup is mu, which is the AT at R2 infinity. So this is basically like holographic argument of C, like why, why it can only, why at zero derivative, this theory can only depend on the chemical potential. If you break the residual gauge transformation completely in the bulk, like when you have holographic superconductor and all that, then that you allow to have something else like, and the hydrodynamic relation will change and into the superfluid one. Okay. Uh, oh, I, I should I should mention that this is a uh, these these kind of Wilson line is the operator that that uh, Nikhil and Son and uh, Dubovsky and Nikolis and Son used to construct effective action of the fluid, and you can generalize like this setup uh, to you know. To patch a different space time together to build Schrodinger field effective action. That would, this was done in uh, these two papers. Okay, so so let's do um, the let's try to build hydrodynamic for the for the one form fluid, uh, the fluid with one form global symmetry, basically the one with a constant number of strings. So here, what you can do is well, you you have the same the system that is a depends on the size of the thermal cycle, which is the temperature. And then you can try to, to imagine the analog of the, the Wilson line. But let's, now let's say, let's imagine we put a theory on a torus cross some manifold and you can put the, you can wrap the Wilson, wrap the two form field 
uh, integrated over the torus, and then you define like something like a Wilson surface. Uh, so once you do this, then the the, the the constitutive relation that you get would be can be written in the following way. Where this row B is the number of the string per unit area with some chemical potential mu, and this H is the vector where along the directions of the, the string, where it, it basically tells you where the string point is along. Uh, so at the ideal level, this was like, I think it was the earlier one that I can find is the one, the, a, a book by Anil in 89. It's like a year before I was born. It's rehashed over and over, it rehashed again in, in Run and, and Company when they talk about like a, you know, a black, a, black fold story and the classifications of, of dissipative terms. So it was done like quite recently by, by Shubring in 2014 and then uh, by Sasho Krasanov, Diego Hoffman and Nabil Iqbal. And effective action and all these things like follow quite shortly. I can, if you have, if you were, if you're really curious, like how is it related to the theory of magnetohydrodynamics, I can tell you about that, but it's not, if, if not, then I will skip this slide as well. I guess I would just skip this slide just for the sake of it. Okay, so now let, let's imagine like, you know, we, we, we tell you about like the, the, how to construct it from like a using cheat and all that. So how does, what does it look like in, to, de, to deconstruct it from holography? So let's, let's imagine the simplest one, uh, you know, you have a, you have a bulk two form gauge field. And the, the simplest action is written in this way. So, and there is some issues about the, the dictionary bound, uh, the dictionary on the boundary of how do you relate source and the, how do, to relate the piece thing at, the, at infinity to the source, but I will not talk about that. It's not so important right now. Um, so you, you, you play pretty much the same game, right? You say that, okay, the, the B mu nu component at roughly R goes to infinity is the source. And you, you, can, you can make like some sort of object, like some, some, gauge, some, some gauge view by integrating the B mu R along the R component. So you can try to make an invariant object by uh, extended by wrapping this, the, this direction on the compact direction on the torus or some circle to make a Wilson sheet. But it's just like, imagine like it's, it's, this is some sheet that you integrate like the, like this B mu R over and it stretch from the boundary to the horizon. Um, you can try choosing the radial gauge as well. Uh, and now it will be moving things in this way. And you impose the regularity conditions on, the, on this object uh, that left the following reciprocation summation. Now you can build the, the only invariant object you can build out of this is, is therefore this object, the, the zero mu, which you can use it to define uh, the chemical potential. Uh, so it turns out that this is the this is something that people call a chemical shift symmetry. That this is what Glorioso and Son and Landry uh, used to build effective action for the high, for these for the higher form fluid. So you can see that you can say that this is like a holographic derivation of this chemical shift thing. If you're familiar with those, okay. So now you know. Let's go. We 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 kind of like have all the background material at play. So let's see how to apply this for the two group. So previously, um, well, you know, we want we have the chemical potential, which is the the Wilson sheet that you integrate the two form gauge field over some torus or some two two dimensional objects. Um, but but there is a problem. You know, it it used to be in this this object is perfectly invariant under the usual ordinary one form transformation. But now, um, well, because like the two group transformation has additional piece, then it's not quite invariant anymore, right? The, so the, the, the thing that would be, you think would be chemical potential now is transformed like the anomalous condition function where this like this last piece, uh, well, it looks like the, 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 the anomaly term, the, the term, the phase ambiguity once you transform the position function in the U1, with the U1 anomaly in plus 1D. So, so to allow this thing density, you, you need to add some other stuff to, to make a good chemical potential. And, and there, is, there, there is a trick that people use to, to, to do that. Uh, I think the, the one closest to the, related to this would be the one by Dubovsky, Liam Hui, and, and Nicolis. Um, and there's a generalization versions and the stuff that get more explained better over the years. But there, there's a procedure that you can do. Uh, but it's a, it's a resumino type term that looks like the following, 
when mu is the, chemi the, U, the zero form chemical potential and A is the background you want to. You will see how this actually pop out in holography in a bit. Um, but the point I want to mention is that this generate a term uh, that, you know, by, uh, to be, for, for this thing to be consistent, then it, it will generate a term in the, in the T mu nu that looks like the following. So kappa is the destructure constant, mu a is chemical potential, rho b is the magnetic flux density, and u and, and u is u fluid velocity, and h is this direction along the magnetic flux line. Um, you can try to do it in different ways. Um, one way that we, we think it, this is quite convincing is that uh, if you replace the white density of your theory by this, by, by this, this relation, by this relation, and then you try to play the, the game of entropy current, uh, then you will find that the entropy current can actually decrease uh, where it's supposed to be zero because we are working in the ideal limit. The computation is essentially similar to the, the computation for anom uh, anomalous fluid one plus one dimension. Okay, so there are new terms in the, uh, in the constitutive relation that related to, to these objects. To, to the well to bunch of chemical potential and densities and most importantly like these two group structure constant all right so let, let's see what what does it mean so firstly the, the first new term here like this term it implies that there is an equilibrium non-trivial non equilibrium current that's popping out in this way and this means that, let's say you have a, a theory of magnetic field line and with, with some, some density inside and that there is a current flowing along the magnetic field line. So uh, unlike the anomaly, anomalous hydrodynamic in higher dimension, uh, the, it, you those terms usually appear at, at some leading order in the relative expansion. This one, it always appears at zero order. Um, and this is the current that you would see that would kind of, you can track the microscopic commutation and see that this is a, something that's coming from the Fermi zero mode that I mentioned earlier in the string picture. You can also compute the new modes uh, and then like the, what, what kind of sound mode that this, this theory have. And then you can see that they have modified speed of sound. And the, the prominent one is the, uh, it's a transverse sound. Like this is like the, what the sound where you plug the like plug the magnetic field line on, on the direction perpendicular to the string and it propagates along the string. It's like a, a string on the guitar. Um, so previously without the two group structure, then it would be symmetric between left and right. You can, there's a wave moving left, a wave moving right at the same speed. But now with the two group structure constant, it's not anymore. Also, if you do the long shoe and perturbation along the string, then you will find that there is a, a chiral sound mode. So basically a sound mode that travel only in one direction. So in basically this relation, instead of like plus and minus here. Uh, sorry, before you continue, uh, can you comment on these fermion zero modes? I mean, because we have an effective theory. So, it, I mean, it has nothing. I mean, you don't know what, whether you have fermion or anything. Right, okay, so you can do the free theory computation uh, for, for the, the system, you know, a QED-like system that we, that we know that it has a two-group global symmetry and, well, you know, compute it. <laughs> hey, Nick, I think you, we lost you. Did I just unmute myself? Yeah, you mute or one or your of your user. So you have to start again answering the question. But I think we hear you now. So. Hello? Yes, it's okay. Yes, it's yeah, we hear now. you now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's so so that's the but the slide is still moving or not? Mm, now it's fixing. What does this mean? Uh, yeah. Okay, then. Then let me. 
let me uh, close that window over there. So basically, my, the other me is disconnected, right? Uh, well, it's still appears. I can still see it, so I don't know. Okay, the apparently Zoom, my my Zoom on on my on my iPad is frozen. I see. Um, let's see. <laughs> what do we do next? Yeah, okay. either you, if you can, either restart the other one or. Or I'm restarting the other one right now. Or move the slides to this one. This one seems to be working well. You could recording in progress. Oh God. I think this is not working. I'm, I'm just gonna share the screen from this one, but uh, you guys have to shout because I will not see who will be, uh, <laughs> no, I, I cannot see who will be talking to me. It's make me nervous. I don't know who, talk, who do I talk to. Okay. All right, okay, let's share the screen again. And there we are. So did you, do you see the slide? Yeah. Okay. Guys, if is everything okay? It seems so, yeah. Now you can, yeah. The slides are, are moving, so yes. All right. Okay. There we are. All right. Okay. Great. Okay. Good. Then, then you know, now, now, now we we can finally. Uh, that that was that previously. I don't know why did I stop. Like it's. You stopped. Uh, you were answering the question whether there were fermions at zero moles or not. Maybe Mihailo can ask the question again. I don't know. In, in case you don't remember. Yeah, so I was uh, just wondering, so in, in which context is that? Because in principle, we have an effective theory and you could have any matter content, so. That's right, that's right. So um, again, like I think that what, what I mentioned earlier, I'm not, sure, I'm not sure how much of it was a transfer, but the, um, you can try to do the computation for the current in finite temperature in the QED example that I just mentioned. And then you can, you can see that there is a, these, the, the, these, the, the thing that correspond to these currents and to this current here and this mode um, will be it are the other fermion zero modes. Uh, by but but the, the what the derivation so far is not assuming any of those. But you know if you if you have if you know your microscopic theory, you can track it down. Mm -hmm. Okay, clear. Thanks. All right. Okay, so. Now you can see, you can try to see like, how do we get these things from holographic dual uh, where, you know, in the previous example, it looks like it's a simple, it's a trivial thing. Like, why would I do this thing? But it's actually quite, quite non-trivial for the two group. And it, it gives us the, the answer that we, that we know from like that, that, that previous construction. So let's do the simplest holographic dual. Uh, you have like, like, let's say for five dimension for the sake of it, but you know, you can you can do it any you can change like this d to the five to any d as long as you have non-trivial Simon's non-trivial Simon terms. Uh, and this is the the term that was proposed by you know by these people. Uh, it essentially you know these these are the invariant uh, three form field string that I was just I just mentioned before that these the d just db square is not enough because the weird transformation you have to compensate by Schoen Simon terms. So you just add this term to the game, and and you know, it 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 the uh, you have the two group gauge theory in the bulk, and it's corresponding to to a system with two group global symmetry. Now you can try to play the same game. You have a, a, a gauge field equal to the the bulk gauge field along the spatial direction equal to the boundary gauge field, and the same as for the two form one. Uh, you can have like a Wilson line attaching from going from the bulk to the boundary. Now, and this the, the the other object, which is like the surface operator. This looks a bit weird, 
but you see uh, why it looks in the in this way in a bit. So it is basically amount to the way that you do the radio gauge. So what you what you can do um, just to if we were we cannot remember that the two group transformation is oh my god it's quite far away isn't it? Um, it's this this thing right? This, this one. Okay. Oh, I, I should, actually, yeah. Why would I need to do that? It is already here. Yes. So there, there's this two group transformation, and I want to pick the gauge. Now, the the order of doing this thing is actually quite important because I can try to pick the radio gauge for by by tuning the the use the one form transformation lambda here to pick the gauge first. But if I were to do the zero form transformation to pick the other radio gauge here, it go out of that radio gauge by you know by this extra piece of transformation. So you can you have to do the zero form gauge transformation first, like take a to a to d lambda uh, to make you know the the big a capital A into the curly a in this form, and then you do like the other u one gauge the the one form u one gauge transformation in the bulk and to to pick the gauge for the b field. So you do that, and uh, this curly phi here that does the job of making it taking a radio gauge is written in this way. So now after regularity condition, uh, say that the time component of A is zero and the BTR component is zero, uh, there is a still a residual gauge transformation, which is this form. So C is the scalar field, similar to like you know the residual gauge transformation in the, the, the Maxwell case, and the big C is the one in the Clapper Ramon case. Now it, uh, it combined this form. So the ter the combinations that is invariant under residual gauge transformations are uh, there are not so many, and in fact there are only two, which is which are these two, and these are the chemical potentials of the zero form uh, of the the usual density, and this guy would be the chemical potential for the string, with the zero mode inside. Okay, and what, what the, the prediction that I just mentioned, you can also see in holographic dual, you can look at the equation of motion for this, uh, for this system. Uh, and let's say we look at the probe limit where the chemical potential is much smaller than the temperature so that the background remains as what you. And you can solve this equation and you will find that, well, if AT is, is non-zero, then, uh, then A sat has a non-trivial profile in the bulk. So this means that there is a current along the sat direction when I, whenever I turn on the, the finite density for the string and the chemical potential for a uh, for the, the, the ordinary Maxwell field. Um, similarly, you can also compute the quasi normal mode. I claim that there is a, a chiral mode in the bulk uh, in, in the hydrodynamic prediction along the direction of the string and that it is related to a zero mode if you know the microscopic theory. Uh, you can also do that, do, compute the quasi normal mode in the bulk, and then this is the what you find. The, so the dashed line is the hydrodynamic prediction coming from this formula, where chi AA is a susceptibility. And then the dot line are the, well, the, the numerical result. So you can see that at low energy, this is a, a pretty good agreement. So um, I, I should mention that so what what is what are we doing here? Um, you can uh, you can also ask like why, well, how is this really different from the anomalous fluid? Or let's say if I have anomaly fluid with mixed anomaly, and I just like I add the Maxwell field, like how would it different? So usually, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the anomaly transport usually occur at n minus one order in derivative expansion for the two n dimensional field theory. No, now two group you can obtain it from gauging the anomalous theory, but it doesn't have to. It can it can then other mechanism that it can came from, and the trans the new transport due to two group always happen at zero order. So uh, also in the the chiro the anomalous fluid case, the magnetic theory is usually it treat as a source, it's not dynamical, and it did come in at the first order in derivative. In this case, the magnetic field or the stream density is just, you know, it's a, it's a density, it's a zero derivative object. And, uh, and it, it, you, can, you can allow it to be dynamical. The number of sound are different. So the, let's say in, in four dimensions, the, 
the number of sound for the anomalous fluid does not change because the, the anomaly piece enter at first the relative level only. Um, but in this case, it does change. So it changed in two ways. Firstly, you have a, you make a magnetic field, you, you make the magnetic field dynamical. So you have a, a, a string along, which you can shake along the magnetic field line. And this is like the, the transfer sound in the, uh, in plasma. And also you have this additional chiral sound mode that uh, we see over here. Uh, for some equation of state, you can, again, you can gauge the, the anomalous fluid at coupled with, with the Maxwell field that we saw earlier in the first few slides. Uh, it come at the cost of gradient expansion. In this case, you assume none of, you, you assume no splitting of the of the partition function and you don't assume the, well, and the gradient expansion is still fine. So what, what, what actually uh, end up happening here is that, so we try to ex expand hydrodynamic framework to, you know, at least one of these things called higher structure. It's a, something that is not quite a group, but uh, you know, it is described the symmetry of the point of view theory. So um, we can also try to do, to get more ambitious um, and say, okay, well, you know, can you do it? Can you do hydrodynamics with any structure that is not necessarily a group, if it exists? Uh, and then we have a phenomenon, uh, like a new phenomena, which is similar to the anomaly induced transport. Um, that so maybe so. Uh, one can also ask, like, okay, in this case, I, I only look at a system where I gauge one of the U one of a system with a mixed anomaly, and it's actually one only one of mixed anomaly. There are two of them that is possible. We don't know how to do it with the other one. And also, like the other thing, which is quite uh, more maybe probably like a more more philosophical rather than just application, is that like we were wondering whether can we bypass the gauging procedure? In, you know instead of like having one symmetry and you gauge the symmetry and then you arrive at something else, can we, can we just bypass that process and just say, okay, well, what you, what you have after that is this global symmetry. It, you know, it can be categories, it can be higher group, it can be a group, it doesn't matter, but, but we have a hydrodynamic version for, the, for doing those things. And that is, uh, yeah, that is it. That is pretty much uh, all I have to say. Um, am I doing okay with time? Yeah, I guess, I guess I'm still fine. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nick. Very nice. Did very well with time, so we have time for questions. Uh, so the the quasi normal mode that you showed us that's of the gauge field itself. Okay, so of the yeah, okay, so the uh -huh. so now when you couple it to metric fluctuations, is that much harder to do? I mean, is the calculation much more involved or uh yeah, yes, it's much more involved. So so firstly we we we're working we only working in the probe limit where we so we, we don't have to back react the background. If we were to do that, then the you know, even with just even with just the string without magnetic field, you get the magnetized back brain solution. It, it's quite easy to get it numerically, but the, the system is an, an anisotropic because you have a preferred direction along the direction of the string. Uh, so okay, so there's basically no, there, okay, so there's no chance of, uh, I see. Yeah, so the, the background has to be that new, you know, numerical if you were to do it consistently. Mm -hmm. uh, if I saw Giorgio raise a hand. Well, I'm next. Did you finish answering the previous question? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess my, I guess sort of the, my direct question is, is there a physical system, is there a physical system where you think this is a, this approach is phenomenologically useful? You mentioned magneto, you mentioned magneto hydrodynamics and, you know, in the reply to my previous question. The thing is that experimentally magnetohydrodynamics is very highly unstable, right? You have plasma instabilities. Mm -hmm. and, and from an effective theory point of view, um, this can sort of be rationalized by the fact that scale separation in magnetohydrodynamics, any kind of scale separation doesn't really work because you have a 
you have a mixture between a completely coherent zero entropy system, which is the magnetic field, and a nearly thermalized system, which is the fluid interacting with the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. And so scale separation becomes problematic and instabilities can be, can be kind of understood this way. Um, you mentioned uh, you, you mentioned um, field lines in a superconductor. You mentioned magnetic field lines in a superconductor. Mm -hmm. So with a turbulent superconductor, uh, sorry, uh, with a turbulent superfluid or something like this be, be an example of where this might, uh, this might describe a real physical system. Sorry, um, super, well, superconductor, yeah. Yeah, okay, so, I suppose we, we were talking about this example, right? So, um, okay, so so what the, the system that this could apply, like the simplest one uh, is the, well, it's, a Q, it's essentially QED in four dimension with the, with one mixed anomaly. So you can, act in, if you have just like one message for me on, then, then they're actually, you know, okay. So for U1 anomaly, U1 cross U1 anomaly, there's a four anomaly terms that you can possibly write down. Uh, or the if you have one massless Dirac fermion in four dimension, I think you have one. You have one of them, or one or two of them, but not this one. Not not the not the one that I'm writing here. So this one you can make by engineering like uh, maybe two species of fermion, assigning the charge properly to kill other anomaly, and you left with this one. So it's kind of artificial. I don't know whether you can like precisely have, you know, or any other system what, where you can have this term. What Q C would QCD with massless, if you consider Wilson Wilson loops in QCD with massless quarks, would that would it approach something similar or not? Yes, this is this is very good. Yes, you can have those system, but, but it it's not going to look quite like what I have. So in those case, the 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 one form symmetry, like the one that is a string, that 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 you know count the string, is not the U one, but it's a CN global symmetry, which is a, a center event of of the SUN. Or you can have a case where you have a mixed anomaly between like the you know a flavor and a C and global symmetry. Um, it's I not I'm not sure how to write the dynamic for those things, um, but it, it might be possible. In this case, I'm just only I'm only working at the U one. So so in this case, yeah. I, okay, maybe to to answer your question honestly, I don't know whether like the like this current version would. Would, would be applicable to, to things useful that people in, let's say, like chiromate or hydrodynamic and, and these kind of things were doing. Um, we do it because we can. Uh, what would like for engaging different anomaly, but we don't know how to do that yet. The interesting QFT uh, where, you, where you have like this higher group structure, it mostly involves the N symmetry, which I guess we can try to break the U1 to the CN, but we don't know how to do that systematically yet. Okay, okay, thank you. More questions? No more questions? Well, if there's no more questions, I will stop the recording and then ask for questions again. Let's see if then. So, but then, then first let me thank you again, Nick, for the, for the talk. It was very nice. And, and also say that uh, we we'll see each other, we'll, we'll have a, another talk in a week by Nabil, who's here. So stay yeah. tuned. So now let me stop the recording.